Dearest friends and families, uh, a recognition to Freddie Kisun um, as a man, an analyst, a writer, a great patriot, patriot of Guyana, and I'm asking the government of Guyana, Dr. Irfan Ali, as a great humanist, find some way to compensate this man for what was done to him. To find some way to re-employ his wife if possible, or to compensate her for the wrong things done by the PPC against her because of her husband's work and analysts, the, some people in the PPC hated him and they took vengeance by firing him which was bad enough but then to go to a man's wife or child is totally reprehensible and despicable. Dr. Irfan Ali, you're a humanist, you're a religionist, you understand the concept of charity and love and humanity. You understand the concept of karma. You understand the concept of the Islamic way, whereby we are pulled into hell by chains we put around our neck symbolically that pulls it in. God, God is no evil genius, Dr. Irfan Ali. And therefore the good or bad we receive is what we put out. You get what you receive. Find a way to appoint this man uh, with a... With, with a National Award as a journalist, and I'll tell you this for the umpteen time. I'm back to the article. Leaders perpetuating mental slavery in African Guyanese, Saturday, August 1st, reading today on the second Sunday of August 2020. If there is anything in the published form in the arts that I find utterly preposterous is the choice of the Rolling Stone magazine of the best 500 songs of all time. He's coming to philosophy and wisdom, you know. It's not about songs. Listen carefully. The writer is hopelessly incompetent as a reviewer of music when he included and what he left out will render you speechless. But he was smart. Come closer. But he was smart enough to include Bob Marley's redemption song. Any African in any part of the world that listened to Marley's lyrics cannot, even in a superficial level, allow himself or herself and their race to be used by African leaders obsessed by power. Anybody should not do that, including the Indian Guyanese. Don't allow Indian leaders to lead you for their lust and hunger for power astray, like what is being done according to him, by African leaders obsessed with power. Sadly and tragically, this has been taking place in Guyana since Claremont Mingo's attempted to rig the 2020 election and through modern technology the world saw him in action. I was there, ladies and gentlemen, I saw the man. If there is anything I am absolutely sure about is that today, Emancipation Day, despite COVID-19 restrictions, there will be emancipation lines. Where a redemption song will be played, how can any person in Guyana who belongs to the African race listen to Marley's words and grasp the conscious awareness the PNC, an African-oriented party, is using them for naked power? You see that this African-dominated party in Guyana, and they have some Indians, yes, and the PP has more Africans in their party than they of the PNC have Indians, but still both sides have a fair reasonable dec decent amount. But when you listen to the song, they must not allow you saying that party to use the African people for naked blatant power. That's why I'm asking you, Afro Guyanese brothers and sisters, what have they done for you? They did for themselves. They contracts, their friends, their donors, their families, tremendous wealth directed in certain people, certain ministers, children sent to school, big scholarships, and themselves to study PhDs and so on. What have they done for you, the ordinary man? Except a little something for some cool homes to cloud the eyes of most. You afro Guyanese, I look upon you as the salt of the earth the original people, people of great wisdom and intellect, scholars, tutors, warriors, conquerors, historians, scientists, inventors. 
don't allow yourselves to be used for naked power. And I tell you the Indogainis too, don't allow the Indian leaders to use you for naked power. Deporting you as thousands of others connected with opposition parties and the election process in the early morning of March 13th, that the PNC lost the election. That is when the, the, the rigging started. From there on, there has been a Herculean task or effort, like Hercules, of frenzied consistency by this African party to lie, manipulate, and abuse African Guyanese for the perverted reason of staying in power, to have power for themselves and not for African Guyanese in general. Using all the people, he's saying, just for the few to have this naked power and be in their nice castles, enjoying life and encouraging the other people with a little bit of cocoa rice or fry rice and a two thousand dollars. But then they could get arrested, they could get locked up, and they could get COVID nineteen disease, coronavirus. The tragedy can be seen in every part of Guyana and it becomes deeply sadder when you think that the lies have penetrated even the stratum of educated African Guyanese. It's not a higher level now, he's saying. There are educated people who believe with expanded conviction that the PNC leaders told them what actually oh, occurred. I, I've seen some intellectuals just because they have faith, myself and my commentary, ladies and gentlemen, in their leaders prominent people that I sit with and you see they're saying things because they believe not because they know that's one of our problems this includes the fiction that thousands of fake persons all over Guyana went and voted for persons who are dead or migrated that thousands of ballots were tampered with by the PPC and other opposition parties these hapless hapless souls are going to risk their lives for a fortress built of sand, but are told by their lying leaders that it is an edifice as strong as Fort Knox. And when they empty it with passion and rage, they can be infected by the coronavirus. This is merciless exploitation of African Guyanese in the year 2020 of modern civilization. There isn't a space to describe the failure of this degenerate leadership of African Guyanese to liberate the low income classes of African Guyanese and African Guyanese in general since it came to power. I will pull up some examples from my memory from 2015 hours. I'm going to give a little piece again, repeat, there isn't space to describe the failure of the degenerate leadership of African Guyanese to liberate the low income classes of African Guyanese and African Guyanese in general, since it came to power. So you're going to pull up some facts. Here we go. Almost 99% of the youths incarcerated for possession of small amount of marijuana are African. Guyana has the most backward sentences for small amount of marijuana possession. Ladies and gentlemen, can we believe that? They promised to got into power because they promised to revisit that law. And we saw how many African Guyanese for a little bit of marijuana, some Indo Guyanese too are sent to prison for three years and their career and their lives destroyed and their families wiped out. If they have, and some adults who have wives and children. And they had promised that they would have attended to that. Back to the article. The African party came to power and refused to amend the law. There you go. It was the multiracial AFC that spearheaded the change only to be stymied by the African president. So the multiracial, which is the alliance for change, tried to get it done. But the African president, Frederick is only saying, stopped it. This African party came to power and refused to amend the law. It was the multiracial AFC that spearheaded the change only to be stymied by an African president, the entire public service and state, state sector are peopled by African Guyanese. Yet, Guyana remains 
One of the few countries where retirement from state employment is at 55%. The pathetic failure of the PNC to raise the retirement age was cause for African Guyanese to vote them out in 2020. And many did not vote. The turnout of African Guyanese in Georgetown on March 2nd was a stunning knife blow to the PNC. Well, that part of it, you know, about retiring at age 55, I really don't fight much for it. It gives people a chance to use their expertise to start a second career. So I, I'm not going to comment much on that. That's his opinion there. He might be right, but I think retiring at 55 is a good thing. You get your retirement monies. You get what they owed you. Otherwise, that you have worked for and you have earned, but then you can go into another, a second career, friends and family. Most of the schools, nursery, primary, and secondary in Georgetown, where African Guyanese predominate, are in a dilapidated state. I agree with that. Total disgrace. This was inherited from the previous government. But the APNO and AFC hardly improved on the conditions in these buildings as they hardly improved on anything at the Georgetown Hospital. It should be noted that all of the prestigious private schools in Georgetown have a higher percentage of non-Africans than Africans, and that is true. Most taxi drivers are African Guyanese, and they were the ones most hit when APNO and AFC ruled that second-hand tires are banned and all Vehicle importers must be less than eight years old, so people start to suffer. They have to pay higher taxes and duties and buy brand new tires. African Guyanese constitute a majority of the students and staff of the University of the Guyana. Yet look at how Granger's personal choice for vice chancellor used money. Well, I'm not going to critique that because I love to have a lady at the University of Guyana, so I'm not going to agree with him, Frederick Kisor, on this point. But we all have our rights to our opinion. Under Ivla Griffith's tenure, more money was used for pomp and splendor, while wages and salaries stagnated and basic infrastructural facilities remained in a state of decay. President Granger attended the first official installation ceremony UG has ever had for a vice chancellor, that of his friend Griffith. Their fear cost dozens of millions. Today, African Guyanese must listen with rapt attention to redemption song and then reject the monsters that seek to devour them. Friends and families, I always enjoy Freddy Kisun, but I, you know, as a Guyanese and as a thinker, as I try to be a thinker and a balanced person, not everything I can agree with him. But he's entitled to his viewpoints. And friends and families, let us hope and pray for betterment in Guyana, and let us ask President David Arthur Granger to face reality and to accept that he has lost the election and he does not have the right or the power to dictate that he wants to talk before he hand over power. He wants, obviously, for them and their group to hold on to something. The Abdul EFC have bled this country wealth for their friends and family more than enough. As a commentator, as a friend, and a brother of Guyana, I say to you from my heart, it pains me that Guyana is still in the fifth month now and no elections. The results is not forthcoming. Yes, we have had elections, but the election results are not forthcoming. One shenanigan to another, and disgracing us internationally and destroying their own legacy and their own opportunities through sanctions. Hope it doesn't come to our country. Beloved divine friends and family, me, your brother, Haji, Dr. Claude Roshankan, saying thank you and farewell, friends, for tuning in and being with me this day.